Hey, everybody, and thank you again for tuning into another episode of Mouthful TV. This season, we are sponsored with A Taste of the Culture, so make sure you guys check out a tasteoftheculture.com and use promo code Mouthful for 20% off your first month subscription. How are you guys doing this week? Good. Glad to be here. We have good, stuff good. to talk about. <laughs> yes, we do. And we do have a special guest joining us, Devon Baker. Um, introduce yourself, sir. Um, I am a, I'm not a native, but I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, but I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm an inspirational artist um, with a new single that's a well, charts topping single. Hey. Abundantly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm happy to be here. Nice. And thank you for joining us. And so we're going to get right into it. Um, Star, we'll let you take over from here. All right. So welcome to Mouthful TV. So excited to be here. And we are back at it with our small business segment. And today or this evening, we have a very special guest for you all. We have a hair care matriarch, social activist entrepreneur, and just an all-around educator of hair, Isis Brantley. Hey, Isis. Peace and blessings. Hello. Hey, Isis. Baby, she Hi. came through with it. Yes, we are so ecstatic to have you. Thank you for giving us your time today. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. I'm giving thanks. Good. That is always awesome. So I'd like to get straight into it, um, your motto. I love your motto, killing through the hair. As women of color and women, period, you know, our hair is our crown. And when I read your motto, it really spoke deeply to me. So can you tell us a little bit about how you came through that motto and what it means for your business? This is how I came through the motto of healing through the hair. Freedom from judgment, control of thought, control of action, faith in a master's ability to teach the truth, faith in oneself to assimilate the truth, faith in oneself to wield the truth, freedom from resentment under wrong, and the ability to distinguish right. From wrong. I love it. Now, before you put that up, I, I love to be educated on new things. Can you tell me what we just witnessed right then? The sound, everything is sound. When we speak, we are sending sound. We talk about someone, there's so much energy in the sound of vibration. So the sound travels a thousand and one thousand two hundred, one thousand and twenty miles per second so you can be where i am in california and you can hear someone speaking about you you can hear someone you will feel it in your head you will feel it in your gut that someone is speaking about me so this is the spirit of sound that our ancestors left and that everything resonates in the universe so it's all about our vibration. Our vibrations, definitely. Thank you for that. That is very intriguing. So can you give us a little bit of history about how you got started on your journey and your hair journey in business? Oh, we. It was like I never knew that I would be on the front line speaking about natural hair and standing up against injustice. I thought that I would go to college and learn to become an actress and maybe a songstress. But when I got to college, I saw a lot of the injustices that were going on against Afro hair. Mm -hmm. And so then I started to write about it and I started to braid my own hair in an African style. I had the beads. I looked like Nefertiti. I was representing Queen Sheba. I was representing so many attributes of our culture and not even understanding how the impact would create a world of change for people that I was around. Then I started to use my gift 
of writing and songs to put on stage. And that's pretty much how I started to gain my followers. People saw my hair, they loved it, and they wanted the styles. Nice. So today at this moment, what do you have as far as um, your business? Is, is it a shop that you have? Can people um, gain classes? What all are you offering? Because African hair was enslaved in this country, I knew that it was important to create a real platform of conversation for natural hair and healing through the hair. When I learned that African people were being targeted, profiled because of their Afro hair, I joined this global movement. There's a growing global movement that are trying their best to get Afro hair respected and create some type of equity for our businesses. And that's when I opened up my eyes and grew my wings to fly beyond anything that would stop us from understanding how God lives in our Hair, how the Africans view the beauty of African aesthetics. And so I just knew that it was important to have a school. I fought for that school. I knew that the school would be absent of government regulations and political uh, po uh, policies that were created to stop us from loving our hair. I understood that there were products long ago called the King Killer. Um, the KKK, not Kinks Crazy. I knew that there were products called, um, um, there were so many different products and I, I can't think of all of them right now, but um, not Kinks Crazy. I knew that there was a movement of the oppressor to get people to relax their hair, to press their hair and to look more Europeanized. And so I just wanted to teach people about the beauty of African curls, African texture, African braids and locks. And that's when I started the Institute of Ancestral Braiding. Also, I have a salon where you can actually come in and be serviced. So a lot of people are going into different salons, sitting in the chairs and trying to figure out, well, how do I get rid of eczema? How do I deal with alopecia? How do I deal with psoriasis? And I'm there to teach people how to deal with these different plagues that we have inside of our blood because the blood is connected to the skin and the hair root is everything that we have. Everything is connected to the hair root, the oil glands, the blood, the skin, all of the, the follicle, everything is connected. And if we understand the terminology, the, the, the practical understanding of what the structure is, the hair follicle and the hair uh, shaft. So if we understand that part of it, I think then we will grow and understand how to incorporate different nutrients into our bloodstream to have more vibrant and beautiful hair. Yes, I, I absolutely love your energy. You are so much more than just a, a general cosmetology class that teaches you the book basics. And that's what people need nowadays because our hair is our crown and there is so much more that goes into it. But I would like for our audience to know that you are not only an educator on hair care, but in a social activist to where you have been a force um, in the community and fought a legal battle with the state of Texas. Would you mind sharing maybe just a little bit about that? Absolutely. As I look at cross-generational biases, I understand more why the schools were so racist against Black women with natural hair, curly, curly, kinky hair. And so I tried to open up a natural hair facility in 1997. And when I did, seven cups came into my salon aggressively and told me that I was violating a law in the state of Texas that said, you cannot twist, lock and braid hair unless you have a European permission slip. I thought that was the weirdest thing I ever heard of. And I couldn't believe that I was going to jail. So I had to reach out to my five children and let them know that I was going to jail. They handcuffed me 
They threw me in the back of a car, a police car, in front of all of my community, and all of my customers at the time. They fingerprinted me, they strip searched me, and they threw me in a jail cell. And my crime was Brady without a European permission slip, which we call, or they call, a cosmetology license. Mm. Gotcha. Oh, wow. That is definitely um, something that you don't hear about every day with people fighting for the injustices and to just love and celebrate what our culture is about. But on the flip side of that, many accolades, you have been featured in many magazines, including Essence Magazine, am I correct? That's correct. Awesome, what was that like to just be featured in such a renowned publication? It, it was beautiful because my story went worldwide. And when I was known to be the first person in the United States of America to be arrested for braiding, I had a lot of people to come and want to sit in my chair. We also helped people understand the importance of this fight and how we have to stand together in solidarity to fight for the right to twist, lock, and braid hair. I had people like my god sister, Erica Baidu, to come at the age of nine to sit in my chair and all the way up until, all the way till she became very famous with the natural braids that I did for her. The extension braids are twisting uh, three strands of hair or braiding three strands of hair and I braided them very very long like how the goddesses wore their hair in Africa. That was a beautiful time because so many publications were trying to get the story and so many publications were trying to bring justice to the injustice that I had encountered in the state of Texas. It took 20 years to win that case. And in that time, there were different people trying to write about it, NPR, Huffington Post, Wall Street Journal, Essence Magazine, Cosmopolitan Magazine. And if you just look it up, you Google my name, you'll see all of the uh, accolades that were put in the magazine. 25, 27 years ago, we were fighting for the crown. There were people that were being fired from their jobs because they were wearing their hair in twists, locks, and braids that I had done on them. There were police officers that were chief of police that were fired because they had their hair in locks. There were people in schools, all of our children were being kicked out of school or told that they needed to cut their locks for some reason because they didn't fit the policies of the European um, statue in the schools. So this has been going on forever. I mean, I'm sure because we weren't allowed to be seen in public with afros and twists and braids and gay lays, it all came to a head in 1997 when someone happened to be me that stood up and said, this is not fair. I will not comply. You have to be fair. We're talking about economic opportunity. We're talking about human rights. And we're talking about moving forward in our value. We value who we are. If you don't value who you are, then you have no worth. And it just so happened to happen to happen to this elder that stood firm on the front line pretty much by myself. Yes, that is awesome. And you spoke on it, the Crown Act. The fact that we have something that had to be put into place to protect us, the Crown Act, from somebody that um, has worked in corporate America and now working at a I'll say 95% black school, um, just to see mm -hmm. what's accepted and what's praised on two different aspects, it just, it blows my mind. So thank you so much for what you've done and the work that you put in to fight the great fight for us and our cast. We are diverse with our hair, loving our hair, Shay with her curls, Des with the locks. Devon, you were showing something earlier. You yeah, he just about <laughs> I was needing some help. <laughs> and the natural hair journey for me. Um, what I would like to ask is, what advice would you give to those women of color, both young and older, that might feel a certain type of way about their hair? The stigmatism that society wants to put on us, 
and just feeling like, what do I do? If I want to go the more European look, I'm deemed one way. If I wear my natural hair, I'm deemed another. So what good energy and advice would you give? Okay, you will never be accepted in this European society. There's no equality in this European society. We're looking for equity so that our people can be supported, their purpose can be supported. I would say stand on your excellence, learn your history, understand what African hair means in this country, what Afro hair means in this country. And if you are afraid to wear your natural hair, keep doing what you're doing until you're no longer afraid. That's what the rhythm of everything that's changing on this planet is doing. When the ear of the student is ready, then the teacher appears. Continue to be excellent, be refined, refine the concepts and stereotypes that have been put on our people. The Crown Act has only been passed in five states. Can you believe that we are still begging to be human after we built this country, after they nursed our mothers, after we were the agricultures, after we were the mathematicians, after we had all of the African excellence and African genius to help this country be the country that it is. And they still give us, you know, they, they eat the corn and they give us the husk. You know, they eat the meat and they give us the skin. And as long as we keep accepting the skin and the husk, we can never have a voice in this country. Stand on your purpose. It's very important that you align your potential, your fulfillment of your potential. And the only way to align yourself with the world and the fulfillment of your potential is to bring a shape and power to your personal spiritual growth. So it's all about self. We don't want any resentment right now. It's all about what is it that I can do to make a difference? How can I make myself feel better? Because other people are not gonna make you feel better. It's racism. There are three types of hair, Caucasian, Asian and Afro. And you have to realize that in order to be in the world of Caucasian or Asians, you have to have that type of hair, but then your skin gives it away. And so that is the thing that we need to stand on, the integrity and the beauty and the value and the excellence of our African culture. Yeah, yeah. That's a whole word, Miss Isis. <laughs> you are a force. <laughs> you are a force. I, I don't know if any of my castmates have anything else they'd like to add or include, but I am I am moved on so many levels. Thank you. So many levels. Thank please, you. please let our audience know where they can find you, follow you, and learn from you. I want you guys to attend our 10th annual Oshun Festival, which is bringing back the spirit of fertility, beauty, balance, artistry, and we've been doing it in the city of Dallas for 10 years. We are meeting at the river where we are baptizing our community. We're healing ourselves from old wounds. We're letting go of old things that no longer work for us. You guys can check us out at naturallyisis.com or you can send us a message through Instagram, naturallyisis, or you can just call me at 214 3293 uh, two and four, three, two, nine, three, eight, two, zero. If the clock can spring forward, so can we. It's always Thank something you. to pray for. Powerful. Thank you so, so much. Your words, your inspiration, your your vibrations and good energy, a breath of fresh air. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Yes. Woo. Hold on, let me get some water because that. Yeah. <laughs> Take a quick break. Mm -hmm. Is there, you talk about energy. Don't... Is there energy right, going right. on or what? Energy. Divine. The weird life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but uh, it, she, she did have a lot of energy, positive energy. And I, and I love the words of, you know, the strength in yes. black hair. It, it was an amazing amazing thing i mean and to know how much of a and i'll use the word quote unquote pioneer of her time that she is 
And we were graced with that. I mean, wow, you know, on both ends of the spectrum. So thank you again to Ms. Isis Brantley. And for those that also have small businesses, don't forget to follow us on our IG page. And every Tuesday at 7 p.m., we do a feature of all small businesses. So we definitely want to hear from you and see what your entrepreneurship vibe is about. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. so we're going to go ahead and get into the topic, which I felt like, you know, as Isis was kind of closing up, she talked about the baptism and, you know, breaking those generational curses, being healed from things that no longer that you should be bound by. And so I think this topic is great for that. And I'm glad she said that because generational curses that there are so many different things um, that we are bound by just because of the fact that we're black. And for me, um, one of the biggest things that I find myself having or the biggest conversations I find myself having now is dealing with finances and investing because we don't have generational wealth. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people I'm seeing now where they inherit homes from, you know, someone passing away, they inherit homes and the first thing they want to do is sell it. And, you know, I, I talk to people all the time. Where I'm like, don't do that. You know what I mean? You have children that you have to, you know, look forward to that could possibly be something that you can give to them once you pass away as and that money that you would get now, you're going to blow through it and not do it and have not have anything to show for it. And we really need to break that curse because in order for us to build generation, generational wealth, we have to invest. And I think real estate is the best and easiest way to do that. Yes, I definitely agree with you on an educator standpoint. Although I teach journalism, I like to trickle into other different subjects. And the number one subject that my students always want to talk about is, Ms. Ford, how, how do we file taxes? Or why did so much come out of my paycheck? And all those types of things. Or, you know, well, I'm going to sign up for FAFSA. And I get so frustrated that although financial assistance for college is great, that there's this stigma that FAFSA, they're going to give you just buku money and right. you don't have to worry about it. And I'm like, no, we have got to get our mind right that that is not the goal because there are unfortunately people in their 40s and 50s still having to pay this off. And that's not what you want. So I love it in a sense that students, you know, this new generation is so into wanting to know how to read their paycheck or how to set up the bank accounts, or how to save. Um, but at the same time, it is a lot of work that still needed to be done because if we do wanna see generational wealth, it starts in the home, but then also it goes out to the community to help shape. And I will just say, this is probably my public service announcement. We have got to utilize the scholarships, the grants that are available for our kids for our kids, for our kids of color, because there's so many out there that we're not aware of and they are being told that FAFSA is the way to go. And they think that it's just gonna be all rainbows and butterflies. I'm gonna get a lump sum. I could buy the car, I could do this, handle this. And it's, it's ruining their mindset. So I'd say we gotta get better with that. I believe that's that. generational debt, right? Yeah. <laughs> I also believe that we need to start talking about in the Black families um, the importance of life insurance and how that is part of generational wealth. You shouldn't feel bad about, um, because one thing that is going to happen is we are going to die. And I have several friends that have become so wealthy because their grandmothers left them this. They Because the Bible says, um, you're supposed to leave an, inher an inheritance for your children's children. Mm -hmm. Black communities, we are so afraid and it's so taboo to talk about death. It's um, to set up life insurance policies to talk about. I, I even tried to question um, one of my family members to uh, say, I'm going to put my uncle on. Uh, I'm getting a life insurance on my, one of my uncles. And they were like, oh, no, you're not making money off of my brother. Um, I'm sorry. Right. my uncle will is going to die so if i'm paying the premium on it 
it, it seems so harsh, it, you know, in our families, but that is one thing that that's going to happen. So at the end of the day, if I'm paying the premium on this, that can help me pay off a mortgage that can help me pay off. Stuff. That is wealth coming into the family. So I, it's just, it's, it comes from ignorance mostly um, because oh, you're not making money off my brother. Um, I'm not making money off your brother. It's an, I'm putting, putting in my money and paying a premium on something. Also with universal um, life policies, you can borrow from um, your face value. So if you get a um, hundred thousand or a three hundred thousand dollar policy um, after, I guess, 15, 20 years, you can start borrowing from that face value. A four hundred dollar policy, and let's say you become terminally ill at the age of fifty, you can take fifty percent of that face value. So I can use at my exposure, whatever I want to use, two hundred thousand dollars of that to make me happy in my final hours. Mm -hmm. Family is still left with the other half, which is two hundred thousand dollars. That we don't think about any of that. So I was so glad that I was afforded to take that insurance class. And I was the only black person in there taking that insurance class. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to look at stuff like that as well, because we don't want our family members to die, but we they are going to die. We are going to die. But it's but the thing is, what is going to be your legacy once you die? Right. Are we paying right. for your funeral? Are we getting asking people to help us? Um, setting up a GoFundMe account? No, you. I left my family four hundred thousand dollars. I left my kids three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And in the black family, oh, they don't need all of that. They didn't need all of that. It's just we just gotta cancel out all that that's been tapped into our mind that we shouldn't talk about stuff like that. You are so right. And we have to take um, advantage of the resources that are given. Not only, you know, there might be things on Groupon that you can find about a, a class. I'm not sure where you took it, but I was just going to speak on, I took one at a church and it was so informative. It was a lot because, you know, math mm -hmm. is not my subject. I'm the English side of the brain. <laughs> but to find out, you know, about a will and a trust and what these terminologies were, I was like, okay, star. Get your stuff together. This is something that you need to know. Even if it's baby steps, you're doing those steps. So that's awesome. Where were you able to take an insurance class or did you just sign up for one? I signed up for um, to be an agent and I uh, it was years ago, over 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. That wealth of knowledge just stayed with me. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll think, I just started to think about how many arguments happen at someone's funeral or right. someone passes away. And it's all about money. And the, and the book of Simon says, money answereth all things. Yeah. So if you're not, I just, we, we just need to get educated and stop, stop the stigma of that life insurance and, and death is, it's inevitable. We're going to die. Yeah. So. Absolutely. And I think another thing is with, uh, you know, Star being an educator, I think, like she said, it starts in the home, but there's so many other places where things like that can be taught. Um, because at this point, it, and it sounds so cliche, but ch the children are our future. Um, and I think that that should be a, a discussion that needs to be had in school curriculum. At some point, financial, um, like financial subjects, it should be presented at some point in course curriculum. Um, and that's because, the key term, core, core curriculum. Because yes, classes because offer electives or CTEs, money matters courses, but they're not mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Right. But and then those and those courses that are offered, from what I've seen, and I could be wrong, are only offered in continuing education, higher education, mm -hmm. as opposed to it being in primary education. Um, because at that point, you're teaching kids that are already in the the process of building debt by wanting to continue their education. So at that point, it's already, you know, the damage is already done um, right. because they've already created that mindset of how they're going to live their life and the finances or the way that they think finances have worked the, their whole 18 years of living. You know what I mean? So I think it should start much sooner than that um, because I've had, th there were no conversations about finances and credit in my household at all. 
Neither. Um, and, and so, I um, I didn't, I, no, you're not going to do it. Don't do it. Not <laughs> why. it's just, you're not going to get a credit card. You're not going to, no, no, no. I no. didn't even, I didn't even, <laughs> wasn't even blessed with that conversation. I can recall I was, I went to the ER for like an allergic reaction or something like that. And that time I was older than 18 and I, <laughs> I was whispered into my ear, just let the bill go to your credit. And I'm just like, really? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, but now looking back on it, I didn't know any better at the time because I'd never been in that situation to know that, you know, you go to the ER, you're going to have to pay this and this and this and this and this. But, you know, now thinking back on it, I'm just like, that was so ignorant for somebody to say that. You know, at the time, as opposed to, well, this is a bill that you're going to have to pay. Make sure that you pay it so it doesn't go to your credit because credit is everything. That's and it. so it, it really is. And so it's just like we need to be able to kind of teach these things at a much younger age than hoping that we get to a point of being able to continue our education and being taught those things later in life. Agreed. 100%. Well, I started... Um, volunteering at this um, center is called Junior, Junior Achievement, where they bring in elementary school um, kids and they have this whole room set up where it's an airport. They have Delta, they have sponsors like Delta, BF Goodrich, Firestone, um, all these dealerships. And what we do is scramble up some stuff on profiles. So I will hand out to one kid, you are 45 years old, you make $20,000 a year, but you have two kids. Go in there and see what you can do. Oh, I'm going to Disney World. You make $20,000. You have two kids. You're going to leave your kids with you? Right. I don't have enough money. I say, you see how your parents feel? This is what you're, you're, you have to get used to as an adult. Your car, your tire just blew out. Go see. This is the kind of car you drive. This mm. is your tire measurements. Go, go to the next um space and see how much a, one tire costs because you chose to buy this car i can't afford it my tire is six hundred dollar and uh, mr baker i can't i can't do it yeah, I don't care. your choice is based on how much money you make and the children that you have so th that's a good resource it's called junior achievement and, and it taught me so much i'm like i wish i had somebody to do this for me at at nine and 10 years old. So I can know going to the airport, um, I want to go to Disney World, leave my two kids behind. They wouldn't think about the two kids. I said, uh, 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 hold on. You got to take your $400, but you got two kids behind you that you got to get on the plane too. Plus your ticket into the into the theme park, plus stairs, plus hotel and stuff like that. I don't have enough money. So it, it was it was just a good thing to do. Let me tell you something. I'm about to try that on some of my junior and seniors because they going to have the same reaction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, no, no, no. no. Mm -hmm. Remember that car and that job and all that you thought you wanted and was going to get? Nope. That's, that's awesome. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like that all goes into not only, like I said, putting that type of education into you know, primary schooling, but it, it also does start in the home as well. Um, and that's, you know, the whole topic of discussion is breaking those generational curses. And I feel like a lot of things, another generational situation we have is like conversations that we don't have that should be had. Ooh. Right. Um, and because <laughs> I feel like that is a very, very big thing in the Black community is that we tend to sweep a lot of things under the rug to, I, I, and I don't know if it's in fear of, you know, being judged or embarrassment or whatever the case may be, but there are a lot of different conversations that need to be had um, within our community that we just refuse to have. Yeah, I think for me, my biggest thing was, you know, me growing up with a brother, my brother could get away with anything anything but my mom raised me and my sister to be soldiers basically like don't do this don't do this what you're not going to do is this don't let a man see you cry like you do this and this and I'm like well when the situation flipped and the roles reversed you're a lot more sympathetic with everything that he's going through but I have to pull it together and keep it together 
Did because anybody? She can only know? raise you based off her experience because she's a woman. True. She don't know how to raise a man because she's not a man. And that, that was our issue uh, with our mom. She was trying to raise us to be a man, but she wasn't, wasn't a man. So trying to instill fear and, you know, stuff like that. And I, I'm looking at her like, that's not working with me. <laughs> she, well, you, I think that if oh, you're not going to cry? Raised, uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I think she just raised us to be stronger. Um, independent women. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, wow <laughs> she just wanted you to be better than her and i get it i agree a thousand percent but i was just like why do we let our boys get away with so much stuff like yeah. we pacify and i had a conversation with my grandmother one day and was like i don't i never understood because my grandmother also has two girls and a boy so I was asking her, I was like, you know, why, why did we raise, why did y'all raise y'all sons to be pacified or, you know, you're more sensitive to what they're going through. But when it's us, it's like, pull it together, pull it together, keep it together. And that's that, like, zip. <laughs> and you're like, well, you know, my feelings, my feelings aren't hurt, but, you know, boys can't do no wrong. They can't do no wrong. They can't. And my granny was like, well, yeah, I get it. But, and I'm like, well, what? Do y'all feel bad? Like, I, I really think that it's really just mothers in general, especially if the father is absent, mothers in general feeling bad that, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. man, you know, their sons, they don't have just, their father. Or nobody there to, that he can relate to and teach him the way to go. Right, right. You know, how um, we were taught, to stay with in your marriage. So I always question um, people that say, my grandmother and their grandfather been married for so many years. Do you really know what, what, happened? what happened? Because they, right. were taught, they were taught to stay together no matter what. Right. They can be getting beat the plum fool, but they stay, the women were taught to stay with that man. So that's it, a big one. That, yeah, that kind of stuff pass on generations. Yeah. I didn't find out that my grandfather and my grandmother were divorced divorced until after he passed away. It was like, they've been divorced how many years? 10 years. I was like, huh? But it started clicking on me. Like when I stayed with them, my grandfather was upstairs and my grandmother was downstairs. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But they stayed together for the family. And, and the, the topic on marriage, and that is a generational curse that I think needs to just trickle on. Um, but it's like, we haven't met that middle ground because we want to break that curse. But then there's some people that just, they feel like a divorce is like changing underwear nowadays. And it's like, well, hold on. Why'd you even get married? <laughs> it's that simple to divorce. So, you know, I really do wish and hope and pray just for society for cultures and just for anybody that's going under God in that union that they find you know that mesh up that we don't want you to stay in an unhealthy marriage and relationship and have to deal with these things at the same time don't run into one bad season and you ready to chunk the deuces either you know because things yeah. happen so absolutely and I think that we've touched on so many different generational curses like the absentee father um the idea or the concept of marriage because i feel like like you said we definitely have to find that middle ground because and i think the the situation in which devon was kind of uh describing as far as you know they were taught to say with that man i've heard i've seen or, or I've heard and witnessed so many of those conversations that happen with older people where you know they they stuck with the marriage because they didn't know anything else you know they got together when they were much younger you know she didn't have she never really had a job or had to you know um because at that time it was harder for women to have jobs yeah. and so um it was a situation where you know women decide, made the decision to stick with that man for the sake of what was she going to do when she left at that point, you know? 
Um, you know, she's 40, 50 years old with no educational background, no work history, nothing else that she could really do to provide for herself. So what other choice does she have? And, and this has been the response for every time I've heard an older person have this conversation, like, what was I going to do when I left? Yeah. And, and so for me, I know that some great advice or sound advice, just in my opinion, that I've received is for women to always have a stash of their own. And that's not to say any trickery, um, dishonesty in your marriage, but, well, let me not say, but nonetheless, a lot of times you do see where women rely more so on the man being the provider, head of the household, so much that they don't think about the what ifs. Not that you want to live in the what ifs, but just to be prepared to always have some of your own. Now, that could be in a sense of, the inevitable or unthinkable happens and you do unfortunately get a divorce. But that could also be your kid, you know, coming home for the weekend and need a little bit of money. You like, here, don't tell you that, you know, <laughs> type of deal. And you have it in that stash. But I think that's actually awesome advice that we need to give our women. Um, My grandmother's always told me about that. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's just me though. <laughs> <laughs> agree a thousand percent but I definitely agree I definitely agree um and so what I want to I'm and I'm trying not to uh -oh. <laughs> like get, Let's do get it. Try, I know <laughs> but but what I want to do is I really want to encourage people to have those conversations those those very awkward or uncomfortable conversations because that's how we start to break these generational curses mm -hmm. whatever you feel like should be said but you don't want to say it because you don't know again if your your fear your fear is that you'll be judged or you'll be embarrassed or whatever the case may be um you definitely need to have that conversation and have them early um, with your kids and I say this all the time even though I'm not a parent I say it to people that I know that have kids is to talk to your children have actual real life conversations with them because I I I'll tell them all the time I don't want to ever when I do get to the point of having kids I don't want to ever get to a point of them not knowing who I am as a person like they're going to know who I am as a parent as a provider etc cetera, etc cetera. But I want them to know my fears, you know, what I wanted to do when I was growing up, at, because I don't feel like I was able to get that experience from my parents. I feel like I know who they are as parents, but I don't know who they are as people. And um, I feel like those types of conversations will change a lot in these generational curses and breaking those curses. So I saw on Twitter that somebody had just posted talking about that, saying how we don't really get to know our parents until they're done raising us. Ooh. And that that really stuck with me because it's true. It's it's really true because they spend so much of our, their time focused on us. It's not until we, you know, separate from them to where we actually have those conversations to where we actually want to get to know them. Luckily. That's very, that I, I believe that's very true because I recently just, I want to say reconnected with um, my mother, but um, I, I did per se and tried to get to know her as um, a person besides just being my mother. Um, so I was asking her specific questions about, you know, what she was doing or what trials and tribulations that she went, went through before having me. So I can know how you know, what transpired with the way she, or the know-how, how she raised me and doing the best that she could. And it kind of shined a light on, you know, she did the best she could. And I couldn't um, blame her for anything or stuff like that. We just had a candid conversation about, you know, some of the questions. She had questions for me that I didn't know that I had to apologize for. And we just decided to just like, hey, it is what it is. We're both adults at this point. Um, we can just reestablish um, a, a relationship because at the end of the day, you are my mother. But I didn't know you as 
a person, as a woman. I, you had a whole life before I came here and I had no idea about it. So, so I, I, want, I wanted to say two things because I didn't want to forget what Desmond says. On the reverse side, um, I like to think I'm before my time. So no, <laughs> but the, the actually the relationship that I had with my mom and my bonus dad, I mean, open books and I loved it and nothing to where it was like too much for, you know, a kid, adolescent teen to handle. But my mother was always very open with our mommy daughter talks. And, you know, she let me into her childhood and how it was before I got here and, you know, her raising my brothers. So I really appreciate it. And as I even go through like our photo albums and I see pictures before me, I remember our talks and be like, damn, okay, that's, you know, that was that season that she was talking about her. You know, I see the strength of her. And then for my bonus dad, for him to be a stepdad, and we used to have our like daddy daughter talks. I'm like, I don't want to tell mom. And it would be something corny that happened like at the school, but I'm like, I'm going to tell dad type of deal. <laughs> but I appreciated that he was an open book and that he let me know how he got down on his wild side, you know, when he was younger and just make the good choices. And he had that same uh, rapport with my brothers too. When he came into our lives, they were teenagers, almost pretty much grown. So I think that was really dope of him to do that. So just in the adverse of things, you know, we all have our stories, but it's definitely good that we have all made it to a point where we do get to speak to our parents and mm -hmm. understand them more. So, but Des, what I wanted to say real quick is I really do hope that parents and guardians do take advantage of talking to the students. I've come home many a times crying <laughs> because my students have confided in me with stuff that they haven't even told their parents. And that's tough to take in because you wanna save every child, you wanna save the world, you wanna save them from the hurt and pain that they feel like they can't tell their mom or dad. And teachers, educators, mentors bring home a lot. Mm -hmm. Your security, you're the lunch lady, your big brother, sister, your mom and dad, you know, you're, it's just so much. So there's only so much you can do because you're not the parent. So parents, if you're watching this or, you know, guardians, please, please make the house that first stop where your child feels comfortable enough to talk. And not everything is going to be easy. That's not life. Nobody promised that. But the love, the love that you have for what you created and brought into this world or taken care of, that should supersede everything. And that's just the start. You know, that is the start of being able to break these generational curses because if, if it is an open door situation in every home, again, those necessary conversations that need to be had in order to break these generational curses can be had. Um, because it's not just solely on the parent, like you just demonstrated or, you know, explained, a lot of kids are afraid to go to their parents. And so they bring them to other avenues, such as their teacher, or whatever the case may be. But if they had that open door, um, then they would definitely have that conversation in the home and it would bring that com comfortability in the home for them to have those necessary conversations. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to get into this word of mouth. Ooh, and heard about it. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, I've heard vaguely about it. I'm not, I haven't been a follower of Gary Jackson, but this is what we talked about today. Mm -hmm. I have not been a follower of him. I did not know who he was until the, all of this commotion happened. So I am a victim of Derek Jackson. Okay. I, <laughs> Not a victim in that way, but I used to, I used to really. Uh, <laughs> Not a victim in that way, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> I used to really follow him and watch me say, like, he knows what he's talking about. Like, he feels my hurt. He feels my pain. He feels everything that I'm going through with men in general. So I just used to watch his, you know, watch his videos, share his videos, comment and like. And I actually found out a few years ago, which made me unfollow him, that he was unfaithful in his relationship. And from that moment, I didn't hear anything else up until now. How did y'all feel about it? So let me ask a quick question before you. So because someone made a mistake, 
they can't still impart wisdom into no my thing is you're preaching to the world about faithfulness about narcissism about gaslighting about everything that could possibly go wrong in a relationship so you're mentally aware as an adult right that mm -hmm. you are doing these things and the decisions that you're making because you're you're preaching again you're preaching to an audience of what is wrong and what is right in relationships you're aware of your actions and what you're doing so don't don't come back to me as a viewer or follower or whoever and preach something completely different because you know what you're doing at this point because we're all adults you know you know what you're doing you know how it's going to affect your wife because you're telling us how it's going to affect us as our men cheating on us and everything that we're going through on the opposite end of the spectrum so it's just the self-awareness that he like don't do that don't do that he was you know, just so damn good at it you would do <laughs> but there are also preachers that preach every sunday that tell you you're supposed to live or what you should do to to live your life in a certain way right but they are also of the flesh so they were born of the flesh so they were born in sin so it's just like you can't really fault him for that well so my thing is i get where i get where everybody's coming from yes you can make a mistake and come back from your mistake the first time is a mistake the second time is a choice and then we get into three four and five and then different women at that that's my issue you're on this platform and you're just so damn good at what you're speaking of and it wasn't one woman that got you you know it's three oh, coming okay. out and different times and i'm just like oh like in your wife's bed that she lay in every night are you kidding me are you kidding? so how i feel about that is i don't believe he believed in himself until mm -hmm. the media believed in him Ooh. that he was just spewing out the mouth trying to get a following and boom it happened oh these people right are me. that's what's happening now social media is making these stars and they're not mentally equipped to handle um stardom or something like that so i definitely feel that's number one one of those those issues then number two is narcissism like oh yeah i can have anybody who i want now especially looking at that interview like yeah <laughs> like, oh okay he, yeah, he, was, he, was definitely, he was definitely cheating yeah, yeah. okay uh, yeah. Um, no <laughs> I, there was no way he went that down. you are bringing your wife looking like that you're all dressed up and she is in a bonnet and stuff like I, it was weird. It was. It weird. wasn't a it bonnet. Was it weird. was a beret. Listen, Ew. beret Ew. bonnet, black here, skin. Okay. Period. Listen, he groomed her, and you know what I mean. Like not actually like groomed her. I feel like he groomed her with her self esteem, with their really? way of life and living. So I feel like, unfortunately, she was very comfortable and how she came on because if you look at one of the post videos she did she started saying this is the bonnet of the lord this is yeah the, the breastplate the, the breastplate of righteousness yeah. start quoting just yeah. random scriptures yeah. I'm like, yeah. sorry but god does not want you to be miserable in your relationship just leave right now i'm not going to tell anybody how to handle their marriage right we can't do that you have me <laughs> on live talking about you dipped out on me baby i'm gonna come through like princess diana in that short black dress when she found out charles dipped out on her i'm gonna make <laughs> the world shake real quick <laughs> like you did what <laughs> i already know what y'all talking about you know it <laughs> i'm so sorry baby i knock all it over <laughs> <laughs> but again i'm married. so sorry i'm I'm That's so married for richer or for poor, for better or for worse. Oh, no, not for embarrassment. He didn't oh. say for the Bible. It said for better or for worse, but not for better or for embarrassment. So, so but embarrassment would be the worst. So, mm. what are you getting married for? Then I'm not ready to be married. So, are we treating? Are we treating the action or the root? 
Mm. Are we treating the, the narcissism? Mm -hmm. Are we are we treating the action, which is um, the embarrassment? Oh, he did it with this woman. That's the action. Or are we looking at treating the root so it won't happen again? I want the root, damn it. Nobody. Right. <laughs> the thing the is, I do. Pull all have that. we talked? Have we talked about the video that he made about? himself the actual reaction to the whole cheating have we talked about that yet or am i late go for it what were you yeah. gonna say i knock all this shit over why are you making another video about what we already went through what the hell is wrong with you that's the embarrassing so he made another video afterwards <laughs> yes speaking, speaking in third yes person. why why he already spoke yeah. in third person on the damn original reaction video of him cheating why he was holding the damn woman's hand, then he gonna make another video about that video. I said, oh, baby. And, like, <laughs> on her post, like, the initial post she made about she was, the bonnet was the warrior. The, the, yeah. Whatever. I said, please She leave. said it was the, what was I said, said please leave The righteousness or something like yes. that. Yes. It was basically said, please leave like the army I commented. of the sword oh, of the spirit, the breastplate of righteousness, gird your loins with all, she was just using that in the wrong in the wrong context that's basically I feel right like, let me tell you some what's her name girl she bet no jen no what did she say cheat bet no or no or leave. No, you know why okay i'm gonna no, we will not encourage infidelity we will not do that leave and before I'll you tell cheat you what, you're not gonna encourage infidelity meaning like don't don't have not Jen personally, but don't cheat back. But I will never give you the opportunity to say we're tit for tat. And all right, I did you right. I will never. I I, okay, y'all. Okay, tight. wait. Okay, that's really not me. I'm <laughs> I'm not that petty. I'm sorry. Okay. It's okay. But like right. dang, like you sitting here <laughs> preaching this whole. Like I feel like you you need to feel something. No, and you right, right Star. Like I'm. If I'm married, like I'm, you know I'm going to leave. You know I know. He's just, definitely I going to feel. He's definitely going to feel something, and the way us. he's definitely going to feel something is in those pockets, because so many people are not listening to him, and so many people are unfollowing him, and it's going to basically humble him again from where. Yeah. He, the Bible yeah. says yep. you will reap what you. Yeah. Oh. I definitely yeah. think it'll come for him. It might not be as soon as his wife wants it, or even us as the viewers, but it, it's going to come. And what do they say? Three fold, seven fold, somebody's fold. It's going to yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tenfold. Yeah, tenfold. It's going to come. Like just social media built you, and social media can definitely take you down. Yeah. Because I hope, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm waiting on the demise. I promise you I am, because nope. You're, you're talking right. in third person, have your wife on here looking crazy, then her self-esteem is questionable. I mean, sir, what? And then you have a book on how you healed. And I don't think I'm crazy. At one point in the video, did he kind of blame God? Something something in the video. Well, I didn't watch the whole thing. That wasn't mm -hmm. right. I don't know. It, was just, it wasn't right. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't right. What did he it say about God? Don't quote me. I'm gonna go back because it was so many videos to keep up with. Lord, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, all in all, I you know, I'm sure we all want the best for people. Healthy, healthy is what you want. You should be healthy. We only have one life to live. You don't want to be miserable, all for money or a new staircase or whatever it is you're trying to get. Why you out here pubbing your infidelity like that? But Thank you. I'm just saying. Right. Go back to talking in the home like you need to get to know your partner is your partner um down for monogamy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a real question rushing right. into relationships and marriage yeah stop rushing into real. Them. yeah and really if you're gonna use that you are mm -hmm. centered in god and you're trying to grow in god you know being a Christian or being a faith isn't easy. You know, we have temptations, we fall short, you know, we're sinners saved by God's grace, but you really have to be centered in that. So and that's why I asked, are we going to tackle the root or just the issue? We're going to tackle the root, maybe but I don't know about it. Maybe, maybe he <laughs> has a sexual addiction and narcissism kind of enhances that. 
and especially and then you're dealing with social media some people like again are not mentally equipped to take on such stardom and so so quick so he may not been able to get anybody who he wanted but now he can because of uh, women are emotional beings 90 percent of the sexual experience for a woman is emotional emotions it's yeah. physical on the flip side 80 <laughs> percent is 80 percent for a man is physical 20 percent is emotional yeah he may it may not meant anything the cheating to them he was just like oh it's part of the narcissism. Oh, yeah, I can get her. Let me go ahead and do that Do that, and go back to my work. Yeah, let me do that right. Quick. Actually, yeah. love. Yeah. So we got to think about all of it. But if well, you're preaching that you... Oh, like, I, I get it. Like you're preaching to women that women, this is what a man is doing to you. This is like, you know, first. And he's that man. He's narcissism. Exactly. Exactly. He's that man. Narcissism. Exactly. Uh, the I'm definition so right there. It it grosses me out, honestly. Like yeah. it grosses me out. Like, bro, like you already know what we're going through. At you this big age. Come on, y'all know how y'all are. Somebody speaking to you like that in person, like, oh, we know what I'm going through. Yeah, at 23. <laughs> well, at, I stopped, I, I stopped taking that BS when I was about 20. Yeah, uh. like you should know at this grown ass age what these niggas. But that can be. I, I don't think age would would change that though because there may be 26, 27 year olds that haven't had that experience That's, yet right. with a man to to kind right. of be able to decipher the BS from the real. So it's right. not really you can't. I'm still put taking it on some BS age. at the age, but not a lot. You know, not a lot. Enough, and it, it's a, those experiences so I, I that you allow saying. you that it's those experiences that, that allow you eyes yeah to, uh, that you open mean? you up to be able to kind of know what it is that you want in your relationship going forward and so i think that the biggest take from this is that you really the biggest thing for me is that you really can't take what you see on social media seriously anyway Right, so there he had all of these followers, and like Devon oh. said, he really, he really, probably created a couple of videos, went viral, even though he was just really just spewing some BS, and now he has to stick to that brand because that's what y'all know him for. Exactly. So now he's awesome. built a don't whole have a brand in right therapy. It's marketing. Let it's me ask right. you something. <laughs> yeah, let, yeah, that's 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 kind of where I was going. Let me ask y'all something. Do y'all really think that? And maybe I'm thinking a little too deep into it. Do y'all really think that shit happened? Yes. The no. cheating? Mm. I do. This yeah. is what I think. I think because he has a new book and he and has, I don't think it's the first he's smart. part. He's smart. That's all that was. It happened. It's been and happening. She, she, she got upset. How could you do this? This is what you preach. Da, da, da. I'm sorry. I got this a problem. Just I got an issue. Okay. But listen, let's, let's, let's go to God and let's work on it. And while we do, let's help others heal by telling our story and let's put it in a book because then we can help not only us, but the we others. help uh, the masses. I, that's, that's how I played it okay. in my mind to how okay. it went down. My it first down. thing, I knew something was wrong when he came out that he was married because I've been following him, like I said, for a while when I found out he was married and that wife wasn't posted on social media. That was my first, that was my yeah, first. It, it, yeah, that, that raised the flag for me. Cause I'm like, who is this woman? You got kids, you got all of this, which I can understand social media being mean. Yes. And you wanting to keep your life private, but also too, you are again, preaching to an audience about how much you love your wife and that person that you're with, but you're not showing that to the world you keeping her a secret so this was my first time actually seeing her but it's been it i think this is just the first woman that was just really actually mad about how her relationship went with him on the outside because he's been cheating on her he's been not being faithful this entire time and that's um, why i've been following him allegedly allegedly not that he's I <laughs> Oh, Bye. we have said it allegedly. Allegedly. Exactly. We don't well, need this man coming from us. He got broad shoulders. I don't need that. 
He's five six. We can kick him in the knees, baby. Is he five six? Five, six. I knew it. I knew it. Is I said five, you six? can never trust oh, a person where he never. He, I don't. That's what the streets is saying. One picture of this man <laughs> from the waist down. That's, that's what the streets is saying. Like this. The streets is saying every five day. six. That's what the streets say. Okay. Oh, okay, that's that's probably a root issue. The Napoleon. <laughs> It might not be because the street says something else. What to say? Something? <laughs> no, what he said. No, no, I ain't even. Uh, I ain't talking about that. I'm saying the Napoleon syndrome. Of, like if if he's really <laughs> like if he's a small man, he has to do everything you know to make magnify himself in his mind. Right in I have his deal mind. with a short man. Apparently, have a lot of women. Have a lot of women. You have big cars. Have big personalities. Stuff like that. Yeah, big me? shoulders, because he got big shoulders. He does have big shoulders, but apparently he's not slacking in that department of that girl. <laughs> in the department of cheese. That's what the that's what the other lady said. So you know, if that's the case, he really just... okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk about that after the show, girl. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just trying to get facts of what we heard. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> and no, y'all not going to talk about that. Sean is a married woman. Y'all first talk. <laughs> That is so funny. She said, so I, said I want to give facts about what we heard. Right? And that's on that. You got that. Right. And that's on that. Right. But no, all in all, I'm sure we definitely wish them, we want to get to the root, right? Yes. I'm going to pull up the root. And again, we can't tell anybody how to live their lives, their relationships or marriage, but we do honestly hope for a healthy restoration, whatever that may look like together or apart. So, but bruh, I don't care. Talk about it because you put it out there. (laughs) I don't care at all. I don't care for this episode. Right, is that all we got for this? Uh, is, 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 we, is we done talking about Derek and his wife? Yeah, we done with Derek. Like, yeah. I'm over him. All right. All right, y'all. So, again, I'm so sorry. You know, things happen, traffic happens, and, you know, I'm a little late here. I really am upset that I missed the whole episode. So, um, again, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, again, make sure to follow us on all of, our, all of our social media platforms. Don't forget to um, go to A Taste of Culture. You get a 20% off discount with the code Mouthful. Um, we love you guys. Please tune in on Wednesday, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. We love y'all. Peace. Clubhouse afterwards. Clubhouse, Clubhouse afterwards. Clubhouse. Wednesday, yeah. 7 o'clock p.m. What well, is about 8. Maybe eight. Did, did y'all go over right. tonight? Did you go over tonight? Catch us after. <laughs> and then before we Devon, tell us about your single real quick. Tell us where people can oh, follow and, you. Um, abundantly. <laughs> a single called Abundantly. Um, I hope everyone will support these independent artists like myself and download, go to iTunes. It's only 99 pennies a dollar um, and support um, independent artist. It's called Abundantly. Right now, I am at 35,000 views on YouTube, and I released it on last Friday, the, um, the video um, for Abundantly. So everybody can go to YouTube and subscribe to my page, um, follow me, and just, you know, keep in touch. But Abundantly- And how do they do that? Where do they- Oh, Devon follow? Officially. Devon Officially Instagram. <laughs> Devon Officially on Twitter. Um, Devon Baker on Facebook. Um, and again, you can find my music on Spotify, um, Pandora, Apple Music, iTunes, everywhere. Digital. It is D E capital B O N. Yes. Oh, capitalization does not matter. If you, <laughs> person, if you see me in person and call me Devin, I will not answer. Devon. Okay. Devon. <laughs> hey, Devon. Yes, I will answer to that, but not Devin. <laughs> well thank you so much again for joining us i wish you all all the best um in your endeavors and your music career i'm so proud of you as my big brother to see everything that you're doing (laughs) thank y'all thank you i appreciate it (laughs) and thank you guys again for joining us y'all have a great week bye